Uh, I would like to introduce Neil Ross, who's going to come up and talk to us a little bit about uh, some of the history of the junction, um, where we're coming from, and uh, where we've been, and where we can go. Neil. Thanks, Paul. Um, it is a great honor to be here at the launch of such an exciting and um, an important project. Um, I'm going to try to give you uh, perhaps the shortest history lesson that you've ever had. Um, but I want to speak just a little bit about boundaries so that we can um, define some of our terms. The junction uh, historically, and, and when we talk about uh, the historical boundaries of the junction, we talk about the boundaries of the city of West Toronto that uh, amalgamated with the city of Toronto in 1909, thereby giving the bigger city a little class. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the junction stretched um, along the north side of Bloor from uh, Jane to the railway, uh, up the railway past St. Clair to, uh, to Roundtree, uh, and uh, in the west uh, up Jane to Annette, up Runnymede, and again past uh, St. Clair. Uh, the boundaries of Project Neutral, very much in the junctions where I live, um, basically uh, refer to, to uh, Little Malta and, uh, and the Jewish Junction. And uh, those uh, populations have, have been reduced, but there's still a, a large cultural influence here. The junction began, as many of you know, as the meeting point of two First Nations trails uh, that would have been in the hunting grounds of the Seneca village of Taegon uh, on the Humber. Uh, and here we see perhaps the first uh, carbon neutral uh, village uh, in this area. We've got a population of about 500, uh, stretching from about, I guess, Bloor to, to Dundas, centered at uh, Babby Point. Uh, and we see uh, a community based around the original three sisters, uh, Bean, Squash, and Cork. <laughs> um, they would have been hunting in this area, and of course, as we know, First Nations communities would have used all of the, uh, the animals that uh, they, they hunted. Uh, the um, Lieutenant uh, Governor Simcoe pushed the uh, Dundas Highway through uh, along a First Nations trail that went all the way to Dundas, and then you've got manpower and horsepower, so we still haven't uh, blighted our, our footprint too much. Uh, the first estates in the area, um, Aikenshaw, Runnymede, Keel, um, again, horsepower, manpower, cooking on a hearth. They would also would have been heating the home. Uh, the first businesses in the junction would have been taverns, that, um, which is ironic considering how dry we became in our 100-year hangover. Um, <laughs> would have been taverns that farmers bringing produce, produce to and, and from Toronto would have, uh, would have stopped at. So there you see the 100 mile rule uh, in place. Uh, and um, then D.W. Clendenin buys up the race course uh, and uh, lays out the village of uh, West Toronto Junction and in comes the railway and uh, the carbon footprint is, is distinctly soiled. Um, at, at, uh, as the, the railway came in, uh, people doing their laundry in the junction had to wait for when the trains were going through or their uh, sheets would all be black from, from the, uh, the soot, from the um, coal-powered steam trains. Uh, also, at this point, we would have seen uh, the influx of industry and with uh, two piano factories and uh, uh, stockyards, we're, we're moving very far away from the holistic model. Uh, people at this time still uh, would have kept uh, chickens and uh, even a cow or sheep in their backyard, so we're looking at very much 100, uh, 100 mile there. Uh, the last point I wanted to make is that we talked about, or Sherry talked about the, the electric trains. There was for 30 years an electric streetcar system in the junction, uh, centered around uh, Dundas and Runnymede, which is, of course, uh, abutting uh, the, uh, thank you, R right where that <laughs> finger is. They circled around the finger and down the hand and up the elbow. Uh, <laughs> this uh, this um, line would have uh, basically run from Dundas eventually to Bloor, uh, and uh, until 1968, really, people in the junction could travel by electric trains uh, into, um, into downtown Toronto. Uh, and the uh, line on uh, moving up from Dundas would have gone all the way to Guelph, uh, reaching towards uh, the red cart uh, that has just been flashed at me and referencing Eden Mills. Yes, I can multitask. Um, so, 
that, that lasted for, for 30 years, and uh, it, I think, is, is a great paradigm. So uh, from Taegon to the uh, Toronto um, Electric Railway, which I believe, Toronto Suburban Railway, which was uh, the streetcar line uh, to Project Neutral, is a fine line of excellence. And uh, thank you for having me today.